include or should I remove? Yeah, you can include. Yeah. Okay. Keeping fine. keeping in light with uh, in light yeah. with our internships also. Yeah. call Santosh, I think, no? Yeah, we have three minutes. Mr. Ajit Singh, Ajit Singh MRS, you are from IT division. Okay, so are you going to switch on the recording? Uh, okay, I think I should better to start one or two minutes afterwards because Dr. Let's Dr. Randosh come, right? Yeah, yeah, so maybe you can switch it off for some time and switch it on again. Whatever is correct for you. Yeah. 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 Yes, Hi, yes. Santosh. Hi, Hi Samir. Is it three? I think we are supposed to start at three o'clock, three to four, no? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's already three? Yeah. Yes, already three. Okay. In my computer, it's so two. 
in any case okay it's good to be in time yes so, uh, uh, hello uh, should we start now or the kiran yes 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 so uh, welcome to this uh, uh, afternoon uh, webinar uh, today uh, again part of the school of global affairs but uh, will be uh, uh, the presentation will be on uh, public health and the, the two other verticals public health and and social science uh, program i am happy to have here my colleague samik choudhury uh, to introduce the program and the courses and what all that we do in this uh, uh, this uh, program a masters in public health and samik as you uh, would probably by now be aware that uh, we are doing this series of webinar basically to prepare ourselves for for the admission 23 24 round of around a round of admission and the idea is basically to reach out to the uh, students aspiring students with our courses and syllabus and also uh, uh, telling them that these are the courses that we have and these are the highlights of our courses and these are the usps and uh, what do we do and what are the career prospects in this uh, in this uh, if they do these programs and uh, uh, so so these are the ways and as i said in the in the morning session uh, uh, i'm going to repeat it some of it that uh, uh, we are doing it we are, usually we have been doing these orientations uh, after the admission is over but this time i'm doing it uh, uh, for aspiring students basically we are trying to reach out to them before they join us as students we are trying to tell them that we exist and 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 our strength is our faculty and our programs if not so much infrastructure so so that with this i thought we needed to kind of come in the front and uh, and and showcase our strengths and our our and what are what are the uh, ways in which we are trying to uh, we as we say that we are trying to do something different and our courses and programs have been designed in a way which is which is very cutting edge and uh, Uh, and extremely in tune with the changing time, and therefore, uh, we, we, I thought, and my team in the student services division thought that it will be a good idea to have these webinars from different schools. And so far, we have uh, had, uh, including today's, uh, so is is, uh, I think, the eighth webinar this is today, and uh, and so the focus is, uh, uh, Sami, mostly is on the program structure and the. Um, uh, The, the the how the semesters uh, evolve uh, from first semester to the fourth semester what are what are the distinctive features of our 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 programs and of course very prominently i would like to to you to request you to also highlight what are the career paths and the opportunities that that the students can expect once they complete their master in public health for instance what next is something is a question which is which we have to respond uh uh is it is true that uh, these questions were not there uh, when we were doing our we were students i mean we used to do things on our own way and you know never expected but i think now it's a different world altogether so i think if i did take sociology i i knew what i'm up to you know but i think it's, it's a change world and, and i think it's also important for us to highlight the uh, career paths that the students can take after completing the master in public health for example so uh, also the phd program and and the, the graduate uh, ba program that we have in each uh, program uh, you know verticals uh, so uh, uh, also i have said in the beginning and i have been saying this in all the webinars that uh, this is a state of delhi uh, the, the ss university which is a state university state of delhi university so 100% funded by the delhi government and therefore uh, 85% seats are reserved for the students of delhi and who are the students of delhi students of delhi are those who have done or the who are the delhites for example delhi wala kon hai who are the delhi who can take this uh, 85% reservation uh they those who have done their graduation for if you are applying for master in public health in ambedkar university and if you have done your graduation from any of the colleges of delhi university your graduation then you are eligible for that 85% uh quota and 15% are those for the outside in city of delhi 
so that is the uh, framework also the second thing is that i think we we are we are very generous in terms of fee waivers uh, and uh, uh, and we are very aware and concerned about the 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 the, the, the margin and, and the students who are coming from the margin of marginality of all kinds you know uh, not just economic marginality but social marginality in, in every sense so our course curriculum are also designed in the, in, in that way so uh, for example scst students uh, do not have to pay anything actually to to enter into the university if they clear and then they join us they 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 are they are there's no there's complete 100% waiver for them which i don't think anywhere there in other places i think they have to some pay the fee then they get reimbursed but here in this university so far i think it's is 100% from the entry point itself it's it's, it's the total waiver for scst students provided you have those certificates and 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 certificates which are uh, sort of uh, uh, recognized by the delhi government so this is these are the things what very really important technical inputs and uh, the students are advised to and the parents are advised to look up the uh, website and our our pro, uh, brochure 23 24 is there and i would especially request you to read the 12 15 pages in the, uh, in, the, in the last 20 20 pages they have all the details about certificates of all kinds you know ews category etc also we have very generous scholarships uh, uh, you know and and uh, fee waivers and uh, and uh, you have this learning enhancement funds and we have this social welfare uh, so the student welfare fund so these are the uh, in ways in which we try and incentivize the uh, the, uh, the the academic pursuits of all these students and uh, i would say that you know uh, our large number of our students also benefit from our again very generous travel grants both in nationally and internationally and not just masters program students or phd students but also students of ba they, they avail these opportunities they they are encouraged to apply and uh, join the conferences and seminars present papers and travel within india and outside as well and we we generously uh, fund those those uh, those travels and as i also we, uh, we must say and i'm sure that that i think we are probably the only university which which dedicates 25% of a curriculum on on hands on learning or field work based learning which is a very uh, central part of our 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 understanding about higher education in india from the day one and uh, it is in that sense that uh, a substantial amount of money or or resources are are spent on the students and their overall uh, uh, learning and 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 and, and uh, knowledge uh, uh, production and creation so uh, in in all of these ways i think uh, if you are looking for and i'm talking to the students uh, those who are going to watch these recordings that uh, if you are if you are really interested in our programs and if you are really interested in doing something on public health i think it's a new program but i think it's a it's a very promising uh, 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 sort of uh, uh, you know option that 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 we, i must say that that we have here so uh, uh, the last thing that i would like to say and i said this before that uh, ambedkar university is a neutral university is a campus uh, there are multiple campuses but we do not have affiliate we do not affiliate colleges it's an university so there is, there should be no confusion about it sometimes people confuse it with some college by the same name in in delhi university which is not the case as i said it's a state university is we call it um, dr b r ambedkar university delhi in short aud and that that is something which is uh, which must be uh, sort of uh, all doubts and confusion must be cleared uh, uh, every time and uh, and so therefore uh, with these uh, uh, you know initial remarks i would now request uh, the dean of the school of global affairs my colleague and dear friend akiran nanjapan to please uh, 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 you know start the uh, presentations thank you very much thank you dr santosh uh, for that uh, detailed introduction about the uh, context of this webinar uh, and the uh, as a student as a dean ss uh, the provisions available for students etc so this uh, specific uh, session of the webinar is to uh, talk about two programs in uh, school of global affairs one is ba in social sciences and uh, mph or master of public health two programs uh, and uh, let me welcome my colleague samik choudhury he is also a colleague in uh, school of global affairs 
and in the public health program and i also happened to be in the public health program but me and samik both of us also from social science uh, side therefore we also will introduce the ba social science program as well as the mph program <clears throat> but before we go on to the uh, specific programs let me share briefly about the school <clears throat> as uh, dr santosh earlier said the school is known as school of global affairs and uh, uh, largely the school operates from the karampura campus uh, there are multiple campuses in the university one of the campuses in the karampura so sga is located in karampura and all the programs are offered from the karampura campus <coughs> the school has four program divisions uh, they are global studies urban studies public health and public policy the programs under the global studies and urban studies were introduced in the morning session now we are introducing another program on bass bas social sciences and a program under the public health division called uh, master public health <coughs> and uh, apart from this three ba program we have uh, the three masters program urban studies global studies and public health we also have two phd programs Uh, phd in public health and phd in urban studies so these are the eight programs uh, offered by the school of global affairs from the karampura campus <clears throat> and uh, we have a multidisciplinary faculty members from from uh, a number of uh, social science uh, fields from political science anthropology economics public policy uh, history uh, uh, urban planning so we have a kind of a wide variety of uh, specialization with which faculty members come to the school <clears throat> and uh, the global is the central theme of the school which connects the all the programs be it in uh, global studies unit or the urban studies public health and public policy the global is underlying theme uh, global affairs which uh, connects the uh, all the four uh, program units in the school now going to the specific to the the ba program which we are going to discuss today ba in social sciences so the school offers three ba program ba in social sciences ba in global studies ba in urban studies and all the three programs share quite a bit of perspectives values together uh, although they also have a special space for each of them so let me uh, start a, a short presentation to introduce this uh, program bass is my screen visible dr samik yes yes uh, yeah. and is it transitioning yes yeah, yes yeah. thank you so much so <clears throat> social sciences is a fascinating field and uh, social sciences is about basically is about understanding about our society asking what's happening around us and uh taking critical questions on what's happening around us and i'm sure as a student in the school must have heard of number of social science disciplines namely history sociology political science economics uh anthropology and number of other disciplines so this program is about this social sciences although we are not going to uh have a vertical unit disciplinary approach in this program but we have a what what we call an interdisciplinary approach to the program so when we say interdisciplinary we mean that this multiple disciplines which we named such as history political science economics anthropology sociology etc they coalesce together and look at every problem from a from a uh, an angle which is quite a synthesis synthesis of all these disciplines and as a social science as an interdisciplinary space borrows its perspectives methods approaches from all these disciplines 
so that's how this program is shaped, right? And uh, as I already said, this, this program is located in the School of Global Affairs from the Karampura campus. And uh, although the program will offer an introduction to various social sciences, at the same time, the main thrust of the program is to build students' capacity to appreciate social sciences as an interdisciplinary space, looking at every problem or a, or a context or a process or an institution from an from interdisciplinary space of social sciences. And this program gives a, a foundation on social science perspectives, theories, concepts, methodologies with the possibility of appreciating them through specific substantive areas of inquiry, through examples, through case studies, or focusing on specific social contexts, etc. In other words, we'll also look at general theoretical understanding of social sciences, but anchored on specific case studies, examples, and the focus on specific social contexts. And uh, one of the key strengths of this program is the program allows for a possibility of a minor discipline in either sociology, political science, or history. So if you take, say, six uh, elective courses around sociology or around political science or around history, then you will get a degree which may be named as BA in social sciences with a minor in one of these disciplines. <clears throat> so that's the key strength of this uh, <clears throat> program. And the program has been restructured as per the uh, national education policy. So accordingly, it offers both a three-year possibility as well as a four-year possibility with multiple exits. And uh, apart from uh, <clears throat> a lot of theoretical understanding of social sciences as a way of looking at society, as a way of understanding society, as a way of uh, grappling with what's happening around us, the program also of aims to build certain key skills in students. And one of the, the foremost skill we want to focus is about critical thinking. And critical thinking is, is about basically is about asking questions, asking the right questions, and to understand what's, what's happening around us, why certain social processes, social events are happening, and we don't understand a social process or event or a, or, a, or a way of social arrangement as a random, uh, isolated, haphazard entities, but are foregrounded in the context of social, economic, political, historical uh, context forces that shape this uh, way of arrangement of society and so on. So critical thinking is a very important uh, uh, skill that the program aims to build. And second skill is like any other uh, academic program, this, the, this program also aims to build writing skill, writing or more of expressing, writing, reading, writing of various formats, writing a blog, writing a term paper, writing a small essay which can be sent to a newspaper, writing a reply to a, 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 a editorial and article. So various kinds of writing or expressing, speaking, etc. So that's a, a second important skill the course aims to. And third skill is about research, about understanding social processes, social situations in a reasonably scientific manner, uh, in a systematic manner, wherein you acquire certain skills to do research or to understand social re social reality through certain systematic process of inquiry. And fourth is practice in the sense of as, as a social scientist or as a, as a person who intellectually engage with uh, everyday life, everyday decisions and everyday encounter in society. And whatever field you may subsequently pursue your life in terms of professionally, academically, etc. You, in one way or other, you become a, a social scientist, practicing social scientist. Okay? So these are the four important skills the 
the program aims to uh, focus on. And uh, in terms of uh, specific courses, the program offers a number of core courses as well as non-core courses, which are elective courses, uh, skill building courses, etc. So the core courses in the first three years, there are 13 core courses and they are they are grouped into, or they may be grouped into three uh, domains or three thematics, namely foundations of social sciences. And second is perspectives and methods in social sciences. And third is the substantive area of inquiry, say such as education, health and disease, uh, population change, etc. So, so core courses are, are arranged around these three thematics. And uh, these are the, uh, the th 13 courses uh, which you'll be learning in the first three years of the program. And uh, I'm not going to go through each of this program. When you, when you, if you want to go through the presentation, you can pass here and look at it more closely. And apart from these core courses, there are also a sizable number of non-core components in the form of discipline-specific elective courses generic elective courses, minor discipline courses, ability enhancement courses, skill-based courses, a course to promote community engagement, etc. And specifically, these minor discipline courses are also a form of elective courses, but they are arranged around three themes, namely sociology, political science, and history. And if a student chooses or uh, complete six courses from each of these baskets of courses, then the student will be uh, eligible for claiming a minor along with BA in social sciences. And for the students who continue to the fourth year, fourth year again we have a discipline specific core courses, discipline specific elective or general elective courses. And this is split into two tracks. There's a possibility of doing it two tracks. Either you do a research track or you do a honors track. In the honors track you do a seminar while research track you do a dissertation with a research methodology uh, course on this. Briefly, this is the program structure. I'll stop here. Uh, you may feel free to ask questions or write to us in the form of email in case you have any specific clarifications. I think I'll stop here and uh, I'll request Dr. Samik to uh, introduce the public health program. Thank you, uh, Professor Nakiran, and uh, thank you, Dr. Santosh. Uh, so, I will be uh, presenting the Master of Public Health program. I have a few uh, slides, and then uh, any questions and and uh, comments, etc. Uh, I'll be happy to take either now or or or, or later on through email, as as Professor Nakiran has also mentioned. So uh, let me share my screen. Yeah, so I hope this is visible. Yes. Okay. yes, thank you. Thank you. Uh, so the Master of Public Health program is, uh, is located uh, within the School of Global Affairs. Uh, Karampura campus, as Professor Nakiran has, has mentioned. And uh, now this being a master's program on public health, uh, it is very rare to have a bachelor's program on public health. So therefore, it is important to know uh, or, you know, given the time restrictions that we have very quickly, what we understand by public health. So, uh, so many of you, our experience in the last two years have been that uh, we have had students from very different diverse backgrounds and uh, most of them had no uh, kind of initiation to, uh, to public health. So uh, what is public health then and, and how is it different from, uh, from, from the medical field? So when we think of health, we usually think of clinicians, clinicians and, and, and doctors, you know, they treat diseases, uh, say one patient at a time. Uh, but public health works towards uh, more towards preventing disease and promoting health at the community and population level. 
So the objective of public health is, of course, to identify the causes, which also is an objective of a clinician. But public health goes deeper uh, as it tries to probe into the causes of the causes. And it works on solutions which are usually large scale and are not very individualistic in nature when you compare it with uh, uh, the, the, the medical uh, personnel. Uh, some of the examples very quickly could be uh, when we talk of say low birth weight babies. So the clinicians may, may treat uh, premature or low birth weight babies, but uh, public health practitioners or students would investigate into nutritional deficiencies of mothers and their, and, and, and their causes which uh, ultimately leads to low birth weight babies. When we talk of diseases like typhoid, you know, clinicians treat typhoid with, with, with antibiotics and, and, and things like that. But uh, a public health person would identify the source of contaminated food and water, which are believed to be the causes of typhoid and would campaign for a policy response uh, from, the, uh, from the level of government, which is responsible for water and food. Uh, we talk of high blood pressure nowadays a lot, uh, and medicines are very common for high blood pressure. Lifelong medicines have to be taken. But when we approach blood pressure from a public health point of view, we are basically looking at underlying linkages with diet, stress, uh, leisure, some of the behavioral aspects, even how we commute, uh, you know, the urban rural differentials and their social determinants. So that precisely is what public health is. and. Uh, and how it is, is different from, from, the, from a clinical approach towards health. So some of the questions, uh, of course, they are not limited to these, but some of the questions uh, which you may uh, find relevant in, in your understanding of public health is, uh, are in front of you. Like, uh, for example, you might be wondering why was COVID more severe in cities compared to the, to, to the rural areas? So, and was it at all severe in the cities compared to the rural areas or was it a matter of, of, of reporting and, and, and data collection? Why manual scavenging still prevails? Who does this work and why? Why are occupational injuries more common among the poor? Why is infant mortality rate higher in poorer states? Why is immunization a government responsibility? And we, ne we, we never see a private uh, uh, sector, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, offering immunization programs. Why do we see medicines in public facilities uh, frequently out of stock? Uh, in the more recent times, how is social media affecting our health seeking behavior? How is climate change related to re-emergence of certain diseases which we thought were, were, were long gone or extinct? How will a right to health, you know, a right to health act has been recently passed in one of our states. How is it going to alter the existing health system? What could be the impact of a law like the Good Samaritan law on the mortality from road traffic accidents? What is the contribution of agencies like the Food Safety and Standards Authority of India in promoting health? So these are questions that uh, we students of public health, teachers of public health, you know, researchers in public health actually deal with and practitioners. So clearly you would understand that it's very different from so many of you uh, may be entering into a program with an expectation that, you know, this is going to lead to a medical degree, uh, which it is not, right? So we are essentially dealing with the causes of the causes of, of, of ill health. Now, coming to Master Health, the Master of Public Health program in, in general, now MPH programs world over have been offered broadly uh, in three types of institutions. One, the medical institutions. And their program would have a strong medical and community medicine focus. So when you look around medical colleges, uh, uh, almost all of them would have a community medicine department. So, so when we talk of public health in the medical institution, that's what we are talking about. So it's usually restricted to graduates with medical or paramedical degrees. Then there are management institutions with a very strong management focus in terms of its content. So the management institutions offering uh, uh, public health management degrees and uh, the course content and placement potentials are very different from the medical institutions as well as the social science universities and institutions that we would next talk about, which has a stronger emphasis on social science input and reasonable inputs from medical and management domains as well. 
Now, the focus orientation and the program structure of an MPH program, wherever it is located, would depend largely on the national context and priorities, as well as the nature and strength of the institutions in which the program is situated. Now, coming to MPH at AUD, uh, you may know by now that AUD is a social sciences university. It has been so far. Now, MPH at AUD will have a balanced focus on society, power, economic culture, and their interaction in producing health, if we may call it so. Now, so the focus will be on an interdisciplinary approach. Like, like most of the programs in our university, it will engage with social, economic, and political processes and institutions beyond the realm of health. So we won't be dealing, uh, as I've mentioned earlier, it's not about the direct causes of the disease, but it will be more about the causes of the causes. It would leverage the strengths of AUD in alignment with its vision. So if you go to our website and look at the vision of our university, you see that you know social justice and transformation is one of the dominant visions of our university. So this program will also perceive public health as an instrument of social justice and transformation. Then public health concerns of India would also be a dominant feature of the, uh, of the program here. So we would work on social determinants of health specific to the less developed countries, uh, inequity and marginalization in access to resources. And we cannot ignore the fact that we, many of the LDCs are going through a phase which is characterized by a triple burden of diseases where we have a coexistence of uh, very basic, uh, easily treatable, uh, preventable communicable diseases and then we have the emerging burden of non-communicable diseases and then we have accidents and injuries which are also included. So that is what MPH at AUD, uh, uh, you know, uh, the focus of MPH at AUD is. Now, <clears throat> what are the core competencies of this program? It will have a strong grounding on population community orientation of public health. So if you refer to my first slide, uh, where I, I try to uh, bring about the distinction between very individualistic medical, clinical health and, and public health, uh, this uh, point will then resonate with you that a strong grounding on population community orientation of public health practice is what we will do at MPH at AUD. We will encourage an analytical ability and critical thinking and the ability to abstract from uh, what can be, what is very obvious uh, to ask the right questions. And this is something which uh, was also mentioned in our earlier programs, a constant feature of all our programs. Then cultural competence to empathize, communicate, learn and practice among diverse populations. And very important, a perspective that appreciates the transformative role of public health as opposed to narrowly defined health care. So these would be the core competencies, focus, orientation, whatever you uh, call it of the MPH program at AUD. Uh, moving into the uh, specifics of the program, so it's a two-year uh, uh, degree uh, program with, which will have four semesters and 72 credits. So uh, the credits are slightly on the higher side when you compare with uh, you know, the other um, uh, postgraduate programs of our university. Now, how are these credits distributed? 18 credits of compulsory foundational courses, 24 credits of compulsory core courses. So the foundation and core courses will be largely covered uh, in the first, second, and the third semester. Ten credits of elective courses, which will be covered mostly during the third semester, and twenty credits of compulsory research skills and practicum courses. This would include internship, field practice, workshops, and dissertation. Now, to elaborate on the program structure, I put up a slide, which uh, actually shows you what are the courses that we are offering in each semester. Now, this uh, is also available on our website. So uh, as you can see, semester-wise, what are the courses and, and, and the credits, the total number of credits that you have to do in each semester in case you are offering for this program. Uh, so there are these workshops, uh, there's this internship, a dissertation, and the core, and, and a combination of core and foundational courses. Uh, uh, finally, the professional trajectories, if I may say so, that, uh, you know, the social development sector, including NGOs, our experience with our, of course, this is a very new program, so uh, uh, probably you would be the, I mean, if you are get in, you would be the third batch. 
So the social development sector, including NGOs, think tanks, implementation NGOs, advocacy and social movements. The second uh, kind of avenue could be government department and agencies. And this is very specific to the MPH program because uh, there are, uh, you know, centrally sponsored schemes like national health missions, etc., which have a very important uh, uh, district level or a sub-district block level component in each of these programs. And that is where, you know, the, 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 the importance of uh, MPH graduates lie because uh, uh, they could be employed as program managers in these government programs or consultants at the district level, local bodies uh, like, you know, the municipal corporations or parastatal institutions. So something like a Delhi Jal Board, which is not a local body, but it, it's a parastatal institution which looks after water supply in the city. So there are these are places where MPH graduates with their this kind of a diverse um, exposure to different kinds of forces, uh, they will uh, stand in good stead. And then there are, of course, international organizations like the WHO, the UNDP, and the UNICEF. Uh, but uh, the fresh graduates uh, usually find it difficult to enter these organizations. Maybe after a couple of years of experience, uh, you may be equipped enough to kind of apply and get into these organizations. Then, of course, there is teaching and research. So, um, especially after the pandemic, uh, uh, public health has assumed uh, you know, kind of a renewed importance, uh, which is long overdue. But, uh, and one of the fallout of this is that uh, many new public health programs are coming up in, in, in the universities all across the country uh, and, and the institutions. So there's a huge scope of teaching and research in, in public health, where if you are interested, you may get into. And then, of course, there's the private sector, which uh, does a lot of consultancy work uh, and uh, some amount of data analytics work, because you would be learning uh, some amount of biostatistics as well as uh, some of the quantitative softwares, qualitative software, etc., which will, you know, uh, help you in, in data analytic work and, and, and make you confident about applying in these kinds of jobs. And then, of course, the con corporate social responsibility wing that has that has kind of come up, uh, uh, particularly after 2013, after the, after the passage of the Companies Act. Uh, so that also is another avenue of, of employment for, for MPH graduates. So I will stop here and if there are any questions either now or, or you may write to me uh, and I'll be happy to respond. Uh, thank you. Thank you, uh, Dr. Samik, for this uh, very detailed uh, direction of the program MPH. I'm sure this will be useful for these students who may look up into this uh, recorded videos. Uh, so with that, I think we'll we are coming to the close of the presentation on the School of Global Affairs. Uh, thank you, uh, everyone. Uh, so, Dr. Santosh, uh, should we hand it over to you, or uh, no? No, I, I, if I can uh, just kind of just to uh, spend some time here, I have just thought yeah. I'll ask: uh, How is it different from community medicine programs in the JNU, for instance? You know. How is it? My public health is different from community medicine program. Uh, I mean, see, see. quite a few, uh, you know, uh, graduates in, in in medicine used to take take those courses in medicine, social medicine and community medicine program in JNU, uh, yeah. in C triple S. No, so, yeah. So, so how is it different from from that kind of? Uh, is there a distinction between these two? I mean. Yeah. So uh, we also have master program. They also offer. Yeah. Master. So I am. I am instantly. I am also from the same program you're referring to from JNU. Right. I did my MPhil and PhD there in that uh, that department, that center. I we I mean, used to call you guys top floor people because we are the foundational sociologists. <laughs> back yeah. then, all of us used to be there. Yeah. Yeah. That point of time. Yeah. Used to be at the top floor. You know. Yeah. Yeah. So, see, that program actually is, when you say community medicine, there are there's a kind of uh, uh, ambiguity there because uh, in many of the medical schools, one of the MD program is MD community medicine. Okay. That program is different from the community medicine you're referring to in JNU, which is used to be called as uh, M, uh, MCH. That was meant for the, only for the medical doctors and nursing graduate that point in time. Mm -hmm. I think now that has been renamed as MPH now. Okay. And there were MPhil and PhD for uh, non-medical people, social science people. 
uh, there is a quite a bit of overlap between the uh, the mphil of jnu that center and this mph program in terms of in terms of the orientation but in terms of content there are quite a bit of differences uh, uh, because we are to great extent we are keeping in line with the uh, uh, mph syllabus across the country uh, but there is a difference between the, the mph and community medicine as we see in the medical colleges because medical colleges again though there is a uh, the field based community based uh, uh, positioning of the the program nevertheless the uh, emphasis is to great extent it is a curative 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 uh, it could be of course uh, uh, community level interventions uh, but the difference i will say actually is more in terms of uh, relativeness relatively public health will focus more on the background factors more on the collective population level factors say great emphasis on uh, environment sanitation population level factors uh, to great extent social determinants of the uh, problems etc which community medicine also will focus but to to lesser extent because there from medical doctors there is a there is a skill of uh, curation curative medicine available there so there is a tendency towards uh, curative medicine either the individual level or the community level so for instance uh preventive uh medical treatment so vaccinations etc right or ifo ifa etc but relatively public health focuses more on the uh cause of the causes social determinants environmental causes and so on maybe samik if you want to add something please uh, feel free no professor nakiran actually i just wanted to i forgot to ask you to add something to the if you have something to add to the mph uh, no i think program. you have covered uh, i think covered whatever was essential i don't think i have anything to add there yeah uh, do you do you, do do we also have uh, you know intensive component in, in in masters program and where all do you do you have these interns uh going and taking these field, field hands on learning on the field exposure what kind of uh, could you please uh, speak a little bit on the on yeah. that because i think that's so i'll request samik to speak about uh, internship field practice and dissertation all the three yeah, are really helpful because i think if the somebody is coming with this uh, sort of not so explored territory in india i mean uh, somebody with, with a graduation in, in whichever whatever field but wanting to do public health and uh, would take a what what kind of uh, what are what is the package like i mean what do you, what do you give in terms of other than the classroom transactions uh, uh, is there a, a strong like the medical university is known for very strong field exposure component in across the courses schools everywhere i think uh, nakiran uh, and all of us uh, sami we know that everywhere in sociology in history in culture creative expression everywhere we can very concerns that i think uh, just doing classroom transaction is not enough and uh, uh, even in our time in jnu i we didn't have any field work in ma nakiran i didn't have anything on we never went for a field work in okay and, but in in the ambedkar when we became teachers we and some of us when early people who joined here and later on also many of many thought that that is something is very very valuable now to add that experiential part of learning the immersive part of learning is important to constantly test your concepts that you learn in classrooms and there should be a dialogic relationship between the classroom and the world outside the classroom and through that actually our students sort of learn and evolve and you know become a critical thinker in that sense and contribute to the the body of knowledge later on so in that sense i was as curious to to know how does that happen in in master in public health how does that transaction happen uh okay so i think our mph program possibly is unique in a sense that we have field practice as a credited course in two of our semesters so which means that it's not a part of a course that you know as part of an evaluation or or something uh you know you're being taken to a field but this is a separate credited course on field practice so we have one in our second semester and another in our third semester okay 
where we actually take uh, out uh, take our students to uh, uh, you know uh, institutions of public health importance as well as situations of, of public health uh, importance so so for example we take to we have taken students to the national institute of medical statistics uh, on one hand on the other hand we are also taken our students uh, for a field visit to uh, you know the areas neighboring the the, the gazipur dump uh, yard uh, so and then we also went to uh, uh, the sulab organization to understand what their work has been regarding sanitation etc so it's a very diverse kind of experience that we try to provide to students through these uh, credited field work uh, courses uh, so that is one uh, second is we have uh, the we have two internships in a sense because the first internship an internship is a four credit course here which happens in the intersection between the second and third semester and here the students do their internship in 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 an organization of uh, which has got some uh, public health dealings uh, for a minimum period of one month uh, so that is one internship and there is another intern this this happens between the second and third semester and there is the other internship which students can opt for in lieu of the dissertation so there are certain students who are who may not be willing to you know get into you know a hard for research work so practice based work would be more important for them so they have this option as far as our approved program structure is concerned to kind of take up internship in, instead in place of a dissertation in their in their fourth semester now as far as internship placements are concerned we have as you said that you know we are basically just this will be a third batch but uh, in the last two years people have been again the organizations have been very diverse so there have been people who work with uh, ngos and there are students who have visited uh, uh, research institutions like the george institute of public health there are students who have worked with the john snow international there are students who have worked in uh, you know traveled to bihar and worked with care india uh, you know their patna uh, office and on the other hand we have students who the current batch who are working with the uh, with uh, the national institute of health and family welfare then uh, they are working uh, with uh, there is one student who is who is working with the csr uh, the csr wing of some of the from the private sector organization so so the point i'm trying to make is the internship experience is very very diverse and uh, here we also encourage the students to kind of uh, locate and place themselves in a sense because that also in a way is a training because they need to write their emails they need to correspond with the, uh, the institution or the person on behalf of the institution and then we are here to support them with our letter of introduction references etc and also we already share a list of organizations around 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 80 90 list of organizations uh, uh, through which uh, you know they can they can opt from from this list or they can go for their own kind of uh, choices if they have one so that precisely is about about the internship and uh, of course dissertation is uh, again very 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 uh, very standard format and it's as it is followed in, in in all the masters programs but in this case we have an option that uh, you may opt for a, a longer uh, internship so a semester long internship which will have the same rigor as as as, as your dissertation and it will be evaluated of course so yes if uh, professor nakiran would you like to and the dissertation also most students end up doing a field based work they collect data and they write so we uh, as much as possible we don't encourage secondary data based work they go to the field and do a, a primary data collection then they do the dissertation and also, in terms of internship uh, yeah that's that's very clear but i would like to also add here that much of these uh, activities are are very generously funded by by the by the by the university there is there is a mechanism to to sustain uh, financially these activities from different schools so we have a uh, learning enhancement fund for example that this travels to fields in far off areas you know 
you know, I, I'm aware that people go to different parts of the country and uh, they, in fact, the students are encouraged to uh, participate in national and international conferences and their travel grounds are all paid by the, by the, by the university. So in that sense, there is a, there is a, there is a total uh, fit uh, across in the terms of the manner in which we conceptualize our courses and programs and the practices and also the manner in which university backs those activities through generous funding, what we call the learning enhancement fund, where everything is taken care of in these field visits. It's not that uh, stipends are given, that the, 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 you know, the travel and your, your other expenses are taken care of by the university. So I think the, the, the basic, uh, the broad point is that uh, uh, you know, uh, when you join American University's Master of Public Health uh, program uh, in the next semester, uh, you will have not just you will not find just teachers uh, waiting for you, uh, but the mentors basically. We, we we take a lot of pride in the fact that they are, we also are 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 into uh, teachers plus mentors. We, that we our relationship doesn't end with you getting getting your degree. I think all of us have been doing this for many years now in the American University that we believe in uh, longer walks and then we, we are co-travelers, we consider ourselves uh, in, the, in the journey of higher learning. And therefore, if you are really interested and uh, the presentations made by my two friends and colleague, Samik and Napiran, and if um, if you are interested in this this field, please do join Ambedkar University in Delhi's uh, master, uh, master in Public Health program and other courses, BA in SS. And with this, uh, uh, I would like to uh, thank uh, one, one, once again uh, Nakiran and Samik for, for their time uh, for this webinar and uh, wish you both a very happy summer vacation. <laughs> and I'm sure that you, uh, that it, uh, it, uh, you please do say thank you, say to me. <laughs> say to you. <laughs> yeah, I just but, said. Yeah, yeah, it's that, it's that admission time, uh, Samik, so I, I have to be there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, thank you. It's good to see see all of you smiling and fresh looking. So thank so you. thank you, everyone. And then uh, I really, really sincerely hope and wish that those of you who are interested in the public health area and you want to do a master's in public health, please do join Dr. B. R. Ambedkar University, Delhi. And uh, this course is, uh, is transacted in the Kashmiri uh, Karampura campus. As I said, that we are a unitary uh, entity, a university, and we don't have affiliated colleges. We operate from four different campuses, as I said. So uh, public health um, is, is located in, in Karampura. So uh, I, welcome to Ambedkar University, Delhi, for this program also. Thank you very much, and uh, we end here. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you.